So hey guys, it's Zayant again, and some more Aftermath, this time on Rush, on Arkaz Monolith, I think it is. This is some defense, believe it or not. This is a closer game that I played with Culprit and some of the crew. And before I get into the actual topic, I want to address quickly Final Fantasy VII, because I didn't cover it as completely as I wanted to, and I did get a chance to look at the re-release that Square put out. I'll put the download link in the description again. I had to put it back in after a commenter said so. But I, I noticed right away that in that game, in the reboot, they didn't change anything. It's the same aspect ratio of 4.3, it still runs at the exact same frame rate, and it uses the exact same everything that the original PC release used. And while it doesn't cost nearly as much as the PC release from 1999 did, it's basically that. And I don't have a problem with that, really. Because in an interview that Hideo Kojima of Metal Gear Solid fame did, when they re-released the original Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation 2 as subsistence or substance, they had to pretty much build the game from the ground up. And I've talked about this before, I'm pretty sure. You can't take a 4-3 aspect ratio and easily re-release it in a 16x9 aspect ratio. Because there are camera angles and viewpoints that simply aren't visible in 4-3 that would be in 16-9, and the map would actually have to be larger. And so as much as you might want to just repackage the game in a new aspect ratio, you can't do that. The same goes for Pokemon, which I think I've talked about before, where you have Heart Gold and Soul Silver, or Fire Red and Leaf Green, which are, for all intents and purposes, the same maps as Red and Blue and Gold and Silver, but, again, they've had to be rebuilt from the ground up, simply because you can't have that aspect ratio and have the exact same map. You have to do everything again. And so I'm fine with that, in all honesty, because if you're going to re-release Final Fantasy VII, I think it should be re-released in its native state. It shouldn't be anything particularly new. Because as much as people clamor for new Final Fantasy VII in 16x9, PlayStation 3 level graphics, it wouldn't do the game the justice it deserves, because that game was great, because it didn't have voice acting, because it was blocky, because the story was a little silly. So, I'm happy that even though it runs technically at 1920x1080, it's still a square on the screen, it's not cut filling the whole monitor. And I mentioned voice acting, and the fact that Final Fantasy VII doesn't have it. Which is ironic, because that's my topic for the commentary and the importance of voice acting in today's gaming scene. Specifically, I wanted to talk about first-person shooter voice acting in the multiplayer space. In a game like Battlefield 3, in Aftermath, where it's explosions and crumbling and just sound and noise from every possible direction, it's hard to hear footsteps. Now, I can sound whore a little bit in BF3. It's, it's not something I'm unable to do. But playing on war tapes, which, as Skulls and Spades calls it, the Michael Bay version of Battlefield, it's harder to hear things. And because I have a directional headset, directional surround sound headset, I can hear footsteps from my right, or my left, or behind me, or in front of me. And I can use that information to identify where the threats are coming from, and address them accordingly. But again, in Aftermath, when there's so much ambient noise, it's harder to do that. So I rely on the vocal cues that the characters say in-game that sometimes the player can't hear. For example, he'll say, I'm gonna F him up. And the player won't hear that, but I will. And because I have directional surround sound, I'll know approximately where he is in relation to me 
and about how far away he is from me. And I can use that information to either approach him or avoid him as the situation demands. And in a game like Black Ops 2, where Treyarch has either made a mistake or made a conscious decision to not include loud footstep sounds like there were in a lot of the Infinity Ward games, and even Black Ops at the end of its life cycle, I have to rely on the vocal cues that are present in order to identify where my targets are coming from. And for me, that's why Treyarch games have always been much better voiced. There's always been a lot more to them. The fact that the characters always call out, most of the time at least, that they're reloading, or when one of their teammates dies, they have a vocal cue that goes on. For me, that was Treyarch trying to address the fact that their footstep sounds aren't as loud as Infinity War games are. And in, in Infinity War games, for that matter, the enemy team is silent for you, the player. It's not silent. Your allies are not silent. They say a whole lot, but the enemies can't hear them. And so you're reliant a lot more on the footstep sounds, and the sound whoring is possible and easier to do. Of course, Treyarch has this mindset that they don't want people having an unfair advantage because they have a headset. And while I think that I disagree with that sentiment, especially when Call of Duty was founded on the idea that you could spend extra money and you could use an extra skill that you would develop to succeed, as in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare 2, where footstep sounds were incredibly loud, but that's Treyarch's choice, and as much as I might not like it, I think that it has a place. I think that their version of Call of Duty is very much their own, and they have a right to do with what they wish, and it's our job as gamers to accept that and come to terms with the fact that this is not Infinity Ward's Call of Duty, this is Treyarch's. This is their vision of a storied franchise. And real quick at the end here, I want to make note of single player voice acting, and especially Final Fantasy voice acting. Now, multiplayer voice acting is important for identifying enemies, getting intel, and rely and knowing when the objective is armed, or when you're losing something, or when something happens. But in today's modern game, where the voice acting is also a narrative tool, it's important to have not only good voice acting, but good writing. In the days of the PS1 Final Fantasies, where there wasn't voice acting. You could have moments of slipshod writing. One of the moments that really comes to mind for me is at the end of Final Fantasy VII in Sephiroth's dungeon, basically, where Cloud says, let's mosey. Now, if you had a voice actor saying that, it would sound corny and cheesy, and the voice actor would have no fun saying it, and suddenly you have this uncomfortable moment in the voice acting, and it wouldn't feel natural. But because it's text-based only, and you're reading it, you can give it whatever inflection and intonation you want to give it. And it's fine. I mean, the fact that Sid makes note of the fact that that's a really cheesy saying is important. But with Final Fantasy X, the first Final Fantasy with voice acting, they had this problem that they didn't hire the best voice actors, and Final Fantasy has never had the best dialogue writing. Now, it had some pretty good story writing, I think, but their dialogue writers have always needed help. So, the combination of weak actors, except for Oren, Oren was a pretty good voice actor, and the fact that the writing wasn't very good led to a lesser experience for me. Final Fantasy XIII was better, but not great. But I'm glad that in Final Fantasy VII, the reboot, they haven't added voice acting. It's just the game I played when I was a kid, and I like that.